13, amen, and we're going to start at verse 6. Can you read verses 6 through 11, amen, read it out loud. Amen. If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife you embrace, or your friend, who has your own soul, entices you secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known. Some of the gods or the peoples who are around you, whether near or far off from you, from the one end of the earth to the other, you shall not yield to him or listen to you him. You shall not yield to him or listen to him. Come on, keep reading. Nor shall your eye pity him, mm. nor shall you spare him. Don't be sorry for him. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> wow. Nor shall you conceal him. Work. Don't hide him. But Come on. You shall kill him. Mm. All hand, right. Your hand shall be first against him mm. to put him to death. And afterward, the hand of, of all the people. You shall stone him to death with stones because he sought to draw you away from the Lord your God. My God. Who, brought you, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. And all Israel shall hear and fear and oh. never again do any such wickedness yep. as this among you. All right, so this morning, amen, we're talking about areas of intent for impact. And one of the things that you have to understand is how serious God is oh, about my, my. impact and intent. Come on. Come on, amen. When we start talking about impact, we're talking about influence. Amen. And so God is concerned about not only how you influence others, but how others influence you. Amen. Amen. And so here in the verses of scripture, we see that God is not leaving anybody out as it relates to moving you off of your assignment to influence others. Come on. Come on. Amen. You got to understand that this has nothing to do with who you were born to. You know what I'm saying? Who your mama is, who your daddy is. Amen. Lady Sello said, amen. It doesn't matter if you was adopted. Amen. Or any of those things. You got to understand that when God has a mandate on your life, he is serious about what he's called you to do. And he's not playing. Amen. He's not playing. And your witness is serious. Amen. You have to understand the power of your witness. Amen. And your impact that you have on others and you must protect it. Somebody say protect it. Amen. You have to protect that by any means necessary so that nobody draws you away. Now, this is what you have to understand. It is important that you first understand that we, are, we know that God has called us to do a work for him, but you have to understand that there are things and there are people, there are forces of the enemy that have come to try to draw you away. When is the last time you stood up and said, you know what, I think that the Lord wants me to do X, Y, and Z, and somebody say, why are you doing that? Oh, yeah. Why you want to go into that? that? That's just a little bit too much. You think you need to do that? You know what I'm saying? That's going to be expensive. That's going to cost you, you know, or you may not have enough support to do what it is that you're trying to do. People will try to draw you away. Amen. And so when you see verse six, he says, if your brother, the son of your mother or your son or your daughter or your wife, you embrace or your friend who is at, who as as your own soul entices you secretly saying, let us go and serve other gods. This is what you have to understand that even when you decide that you're going to disobey God, that's going after another God. Yes. Come on here. Amen. We're talking about areas of intent for impact. You can't impact anybody with a disobedient spirit. Come on here. Amen. If you are disobedient, you can't do what God called you to do. You're not going to be able to reach the people that God called you to reach. And you got to have a sensitive ear so that when people start talking to you and they start giving you all kinds of advice, amen, that you understand whether that advice comes from God or is it soulish. Come on. Amen. Amen. We, are, we don't need nobody to psychologize the will of God. Right Come on, amen. Don't give me no psychology. Right. Amen. I need to walk, amen, in some spiritual, amen, amen, some 
spiritual, amen, mind, amen, and know what God is telling me to do so that I can obey him and not be drawn away because you don't understand what God called me to do. Right, amen. Hallelujah, amen. So he's saying to them, amen, under no uncertain terms, not only are you to get away from him, because you know how we do, we feel sorry for people. We was talking about that yesterday, amen, how sometimes we have people who don't believe in what we are called to do, you know what I'm saying? And if you have people that's around you and they don't believe in what you are called to do, you better get away from them jokers. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, listen, because there's one or two things that's going to happen. If you're not drawing them, they're going to draw you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They're going to draw you. Somebody will talk you out of destiny. Amen. Especially Amen. people who are close Amen. to your heart. And this is why God is dealing with this. Because he understands Amen. that love has the power to influence yes. us. Emotion has the power to influence yes. us. Amen. How I feel about you, amen, gives your words weight. Yes. Come on here. Amen. So if I love you, I'm going to listen to you. If you my husband, if you my best friend, if you my son, my daughter, amen, I'm going to give your words weight yes. because I love you. Yes. And God understood this. And he said, listen, I brought you out of the wilderness with purpose on you. And I can't allow anything and anybody to deter you from that. And in order for that to happen, you got to guard your heart. Yes. Come on here. God, now you, that don't sound right. My husband is saved. My wife is saved. Why would I have to guard my heart from them? Because what God, even though y'all together... That don't mean that God called you to do the same thing. Oh, oh that's, that's dangerous territory. Come on here. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to understand that when you stand before God, they ain't going to be there with you, honey. Hallelujah. Every man going to have to give an account for the deeds done in his body between them and God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. So you got to understand God is telling me, setting them up. While you in this land, I need you to understand that there are forces that are coming against you. Even though I know you love me. Even though I know you know what your assignment is. Even though you know the impact that's supposed to, amen, come from your life. You got to understand that there are things around you that are going to try to impact you. They're going to try to counterattack your impact. My God. Come on here, amen. They're going to try to counterattack the impact that you have. That's They're trying to tear it down. To try to destroy, amen, your reputation. That's Listen to me. You got to understand what reputation is. It's not what you think of you, it's what others think of you. Right, exactly. amen. Come on. And if people don't know the right thing about you, yes. then you can't walk where God wants you to walk. Come on, Amen. Hallelujah. So he's dealing with them and he said, he said, if they come to you secretly and say, let's go after other gods and serve them, which neither you nor your fathers have known. Some of the gods of the peoples who are around you, whether near or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other, you shall not yield to him, nor listen to him, nor shall your eye pity him, nor shall you spare him, nor, or, nor shall you conceal him. This is the thing. You know, because we get in relationships with people, we get in friendships with people, you know what I'm saying? You still have to learn how to wear those things loosely. Amen. Okay? You have to. Because you have to understand there is nothing that you should... We, and we say the scripture, nothing to separate me from the love of God. But let somebody come and tell us something that we want to hear. Oh, right. yes. Right. Come on. Right. Let somebody come and share something with us. Amen. Or tell us something that, that seems like it's going to give us an easy out. Yes. Ooh. Come on, then we don't have to carry the weight of this anointing. Then we don't have to go through the testing and the trial that we face. Come on, amen, hallelujah, amen. glory to God. And then we find ourselves <laughs> obeying the voices of others. And God is saying, don't pity them. Don't spare them. You know when you're supposed to separate from folks, you're like, but they're still really nice people. But they were so nice to me. They did so much for me. Don't pity them and don't spare them. Yeah. Hallelujah. We talk big. We talk tough. I ain't got no time for nobody to get in my way. They get in my way or get in the will of God. Amen. If I got to go by myself, I'm going to go. But then when it's time for you to go by yourself, you start looking around for somebody to walk alongside you. Yeah. Come on here. Amen. Everybody else haven't been called to do what you've been called to do. Stop trying to give your responsibility to somebody else. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. That's good. Yeah. Amen. So let me give you a couple of definitions for a second here. Intent is purpose, aim, goal, or target. It is to be resolved or determined to do something, to be bent on something. You know how you say somebody's hell bent on doing something? Hallelujah. That's intent. Hallelujah. That means nothing moves you from what's in you that you got to do. When you understand that you are not from this world. This world is you just passing through. I just happen to have on an earth suit, but I'm not from here. Mm. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. They making all kinds of movies, E.T. and all that stuff. Listen, we the real E.T.s. <laughs> Come on here, amen. Hallelujah. You're looking for a being from another world, that's us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're here to impact the world with the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. That is our responsibility. That is the intention that we have got to live in. You can't, amen, think that your intention to be here is just for you to have a good car and a good job and a nice husband and a nice wife. You know what I'm saying? 2.3 children. How many kids that is? I don't know how you have two and a half kids, but however. <laughs> Come on, amen. That's have you a 401k, you know what I'm saying, good health insurance. That's wonderful. I'm not telling you you can't have those things. But your purpose has to be beyond that. Oh, yes. Amen. If you as a believer, if that is your only purpose, you're living beneath the call of God on your life. Amen. God did not just call you to live a cushy life. We are a countercultural movement. And until you understand that that's what the ecclesia is, you will never be able to have impact in the earth. Hello? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when you understand that and people come alongside you and they don't really mean you any good and they're not really a part of your destiny and they don't speak, amen, the same language, how can two walk together except they be agreed? I'm speaking French, you speaking English, come on here, we got to speak the same language. Amen. Amen. It's nothing worse than putting together an orchestra and everybody's playing the wrong key. Yeah. Come on here, amen. That's not harmony. That's not unity. That's not one sound. Come on, amen. And that's where we have got to get to. And in order for that to happen, then all of us need to be militant about our assignment. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. Every last one of us, you need to understand, this is why I was born. This is why I'm in the earth. This is why God saved me, for me to impact nations yes. with the kingdom of God. Yes, amen. Not for me to have my job. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Not for me to just have children and be happy because I had a hard life. And I just really just wanted to always just have my own family and my own kids. I know what it's like to live in that. But when God allows all that to blow up in your face. Yeah. Come, on here. come on. What you going to have then? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. What you going to have then? What you going to have, amen, when your friends betray you? Mm -hmm. Those that you trust. Hallelujah. And that's usually where betrayal come from. It don't hurt you if a stranger betrays you. You expect that. Come on here. But when you have somebody who's here. Come on here. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is, as the scripture says, as your own soul. Yes. How you handle that? How are you going to still maintain and have impact when your soul is tied up in relationships? Now, let me give you a little sidebar to that. Now, God is relational, and I believe that that's true apostolic ministry to walk in relationship. You can't have one without the other, Amen. okay? But when we're all like-minded, we all understand that. So those things go without saying. But when I'm walking with people who are not apostolic in their mindset, then I'm going to run into problems because they are of this world. They love this world. They want to live in this world. They want to have preeminence in this world. Amen? And they're not on a kingdom assignment. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that I have to have a mind about my purpose, my intent. Amen. What is my aim? What is my goal? The word impact means collision. Hallelujah. It is a collision. Hallelujah. You got to crash into this thing. Hallelujah. That means it's going to cause damage. Hallelujah. This is how we become those, amen, that are described in Acts, that these are they that have turned the world upside down because we have collided with the culture of this world and we have come in with a kingdom mindset, with a message that is otherworldly. What are you talking about? There's another kingdom. What are you talking about? That God is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What are you talking about? That this world is not my home. What are you talking about? That there's another kingdom that Jesus Jesus come, amen, and he went away to prepare a place for us. What you talking about? Mm. How you believe all that fluff? 
because I'm not from here. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when we get this right, you know how they say, hallelujah, in the movies, amen. What they say in the movies, whenever they bump into aliens and they see something that's so phenomenal, it blows their mind, they say, take me to your leader. Ah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what we got to do. Take me to your leader. Hallelujah. That's how you know you had impact. Hallelujah. Because they don't just want you. I got to have what has collided with your life and transform you that way. Take me to your leader. Hallelujah. But you're not going to get that if you're worried about who's connected to you. You're not going to get that if you worry about, can you be my friend? Can you be my sister? Let me tell you something. Jesus' message alienated him. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. The message that the apostles preached alienated them. So much so that their very lives were at risk. Who's trying to kill you for what you're preaching? Come on. Come on. I'm not even talking about natural entities. Let's talk about spiritual entities. Does the devil even know you exist? Have you had any impact, amen, on his kingdom? Has your life collided with the purpose of God enough so that what you say carries weight? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Areas of intent for impact. I got to collide with this thing. Hallelujah. I got to make sure that when I leave here, and listen, the scripture talks about that. Hallelujah. The scripture says that before them, it looks like the Garden of Eden, but behind them is destruction. My God. Because once we leave, there should be a sign that we live here. My God. Come on here. Hallelujah. We should walk into a place and bust it all up. Yeah. Hallelujah. I was good to you back in giving my business. I was fine until you started telling me I was worldly. Yeah. I was fine until you started telling me I was carnal, so under sin. Hallelujah. Wow. Glory to God. But now that I'm here, we got to tear this thing up. Yeah. Come on here, tear it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's your job. Anybody ever been in a collision? Anybody ever seen a collision? Anybody ever seen the mango wreckage that's left behind a collision? This comfortable, sweet Christianity don't have no impact. Right, my God. Hallelujah. So if what you are as a believer and a Christian, amen, hallelujah, doesn't mangle up where you've been. And I'm not talking about being messy. I'm not talking about being a gossip. I'm not talking about, amen, being a truth breaker. I'm not talking about sleeping with other people's husbands and foolishness like that. I'm talking about, amen, when you walk into a place, amen, change and transformation got to take place. Hallelujah. My mind changes and my heart transforms because of what I heard. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Areas of intent. Hallelujah. For impact. Amen. So he said, you shall, verse 9, you shall kill him. Your hand shall be first against him to put him to death. Don't wait for somebody else to come and tell you, girl, why are you still hanging out with them? Amen. You should be the first one to cut them off. Amen. When you sense that they heart ain't right. When you sense that their heart is not for your assignment. Come on here, amen. When you pick it up in the spirit, mm -mm, you ain't here. Because you can be here and not be here. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be, amen, hallelujah, in the house and not be at home. Come on here, amen. You got to know the difference. And when you sense that, you got to move on that. When you sense that, you can't wait for somebody else to do it. Your hand got to be first. Amen. You can't hesitate on this thing. Because if you hesitate, you're going to lose time. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only are you going to lose time. Amen. But you don't want God changing his mind. 
about you. Listen, when you go back to the scripture, you look at when Elijah called Elisha. He said, first let me go back and and and, and go say goodbye to my father. He said, what did don't I do? Don't do that. Don't, don't, oh, don't do oh, it. I must have got the wrong don't, person. Don't do it. Come on here. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I must have bumped into the wrong person. I thought that you was him. Come on here. Hallelujah. What I found out is, is when God first called us to our destiny, we hesitate. Yeah. We hesitate. Because we're trying to figure out, wait a minute, what you call me for? <laughs> Come on, amen. Because it's hard for us to believe that God wants us to have the kind of impact that he's calling us to. Amen. amen. I know that was my thought. Yes. Like, you got you to be kidding me. Like, Ain't there somebody else that can do this? Like, I'm just Big Mouth Fran, <laughs> okay? Who like to get in trouble all the time. You, you sure you want me to do this? But I know that God is calling troublemakers. Yeah. Come on here. Folks, you can't be bought. Show me the money if you want to. Amen. My daddy owned cattle on a thousand hills. I ain't worried about you. Amen. Amen. You can't buy me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So you got to be able, amen, to connect with your destiny. Now let's skip down to verse 12. Amen. Amen. Real quickly, amen. Read, because I got 10 minutes on the area. Hallelujah. Amen. Verses 12 through 18. What does it say? If you hear in one of your cities, which the Lord your God is giving you to dwell there, that certain worthless fellows have gone out among you and have drawn away the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods which you have not known, then you shall inquire and make search and ask diligently. And behold, if it be true and certain that such an abomination has been done among you, you shall surely put the inhabitants of that city to the mm -hmm. sword, devoting it to destruction, all who are in it and its cattle with the edge of the sword. You shall <laughs> gather all its spoils into the midst of its own square and burn the city uh -huh. and all its spoil with fire. As a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. It shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. None of the devoted things shall stick to your hand. And the Lord may turn from the furnace. Fierceness. Of anger, from the fierceness of his anger. And show you mercy. <coughs> and have compassion on you. And look. Hold it. That the Lord will show you mercy, have compassion on you, and multiply you. You know why nobody can't follow you, right? You know why you can't, amen, see people, amen, see your life being multiplied in the lives of others? Because you're not militant about this thing. My God, Jesus. So first he says, somebody close to you, I need you to get them out of your life. Then he says, if you find out that they're in the city, and they have the power to influence others... I need you to be concerned about your brethren. Come on here. And I need you, amen, to go in that place with a sword. And I need you to tear down everything that's not like me. And don't spare nothing. I want you to get their kids. I want you to get all of their spoil. Don't you let none of that stuff stick to your hand. Don't you say, well, I got the victory, so now I get the spoil. No. You don't want nothing that's from them. I don't want your gifts. I don't want your presence. Come on here. I don't want your platform. I want to come and tear down what you preach. That ain't like God. This is time for us to come in and infiltrate, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. platforms and places so that we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care I'm surrounded by idolatry. I'm coming here to tear down the idol. I don't care if I'm in a city full of fornicators. I'm coming here to show you how to keep your legs cold.
to understand we are not from this world. Yes. We don't use the world's tactics. Uh, amen. We don't act like the world. We don't behave like the world. And you know some people say, why do you say that? That's not nice. No, it's not. But the Bible says mark them. That cause divisions among you. Wow. And if your doctrine is off, you're causing a division. Yes, you are. Yeah. Bust it up, Apostle. My God. Come on here. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you are pushing and promulgating sin yes. and works of yes. the flesh, you yes. are causing division. Jesus. And Paul made names. Yes. Oh, Come on here. He said, watch them. Watch, look out for him and names and for ladies. Watch them. If they come among you, don't you receive them. Amen. I told you, this cushy Christianity ain't going to catch you. Uh, man. You can't walk with that and say, you say, what kind of impact you going to have if you're just going along? Didn't you say we're not going with the crowd, we're going with the crowd? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. I'm following the cloud, oh. but my vision ain't cloudy. It ain't cloudy. Oh, my come God. I could see. And I know down in my number when something ain't right. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. And I can't preach against what I condone. Oh. I can't preach against it if I'm indulging. Come on here. This is why God is dealing with the children of Israel like this. Because he understands Satan is coming for your assignment. Yes, Listen to me. From the foundation of the world, he's been after the man child. Yes. From the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We were talking about that last night. Amen. How demons come after you just because of a prophecy. Yes. Oh, God. Can you deal with it just for a second? Hallelujah. Just for Amen. A just for a second. Can you do that? I can do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How bad? Amen. Pharaoh released an edict. Yes. Watch this. Hallelujah. Over a prophecy. Over a prophecy. He was ungodly. He was serving the gods of the heavens, not the God of heaven. Come on, yeah. Come on, amen. And he was worried about another deliverer coming. How do you, you believe what I believe? Why are you coming after me for? My God. You My must God. Believe. <laughs> you, must, you must really believe. Amen. We deal, we deal with that in scripture and we see that. We see that Herod came after Jesus just because of a prophecy. We see in Revelation that the enemy is coming after the woman who is great with child over the prophetic word. Hallelujah. That she's going to birth out. Guess what? That's why Satan is after you because the main child is not just something that's pie in the sky by and by. He's on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And Satan is after the God in you. Kill the Jesus that you yes. carry. Yes. Wow. Wow. If I can kill the Christ that's on the inside of you, then you can't be a deliverer. Right. The Bible says, out of Zion, right. shall come up the deliverer. That's the word of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. How are oh. deliverers coming out of Zion if I'm letting you kill what's in me? Yes. Come on here. We're talking about impact. How are you going to have impact? How are you going to do the will of God? It's time out for us walking around. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't, I don't know why I'm here. I just know that God wants me to do something. You better find out what it is he wants you to do. Amen. There's a place of knowing that we should live in. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I teach the prophets, amen, when we do school of prophets, I teach them. Listen, there's a place of knowing that we can live in. Jesus only one time in his whole ministry, in his whole life, ever stopped to ask God what he should do. Every other time, he walked by that compass on the inside. Yeah. That's why I said you don't need a map, you need a compass. He only stopped once, and that was in the garden, to say, is it your will I do this? Amen. Every other time it was, I must needs go do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He was driven by that compass on the inside that was already in tune with God. You know what God wants you to do. Why are you playing around like, I don't know what the will of the Lord is. The Bible says we should be able to comprehend with all saints. Come on here. What the will of the Lord is. You should know what his will is. Nobody should have to come and prophesy you the will of God. If you in touch with God, you should know what his will is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You made me go off my notes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
So you have to understand we all face that temptation to run away from our destiny, but you cannot do it. You cannot do it. You got to face those things that are pulling at you. Amen. And I know what it's like to pray and cry and say, Lord, please don't let me get in my car and go down the street. Lord, please don't let me pick up this phone and make this phone call. Come on. Amen. Because the, the enemy wants to pull you away from what God has called you to do. You, you have to deal with these human things, this element of your humanity. You have to deal with that. But you don't have to let it overcome you. Oh, my, my, my. Amen. You don't have to let it overtake you. You need to know how to walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can't do that walking in your flesh, being carnal. <coughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So I got, I got, whoo, Jesus, I got five minutes. Let me do this real quick, okay? Now, I need you to understand that this was one way that God was dealing with Israel. But I want to tell you this, that every battle that we win is not going to always be by sword. There's some battles you're going to win by influence. Amen. That's Amen. Good. Some battles That's you're going to win by influence yeah. just based off of who God is in you. Who he called you to be. And you standing in that. And so we have this thing now that we do. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I put my own spin on it based off of what the Lord was speaking to me. Amen. We have this seven mountain mandate. Amen. About all these seven mountains that we need to touch. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I give you a biblical amen outlook on that? I'm not saying that what they have is not biblical. But when what we have compromises us, amen. that's a problem. Amen. You have to understand, infiltration does not always mean participation. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Can I say that again? Yeah. Infiltration does not always mean participation. Amen. You have to learn how to infiltrate without being poisoned. Oh, Amen. Amen. You have to learn how to walk into a setting and not let that setting influence you yeah. because of what you are saturated with. Amen. Come on. And that only comes from us being in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. All right. So these seven mountains, these seven places or these seven things, amen, that we're talking about intention. Number one, religion. We're going to have to first and foremost break down the spirit of militant Pentecostalism. Mm. Okay. And I know also we love Pentecost. I love Pentecost. I'm not against Pentecost. But we have militant Pentecostalism that teaches us that you got to do this, you got to do that. It's really the law. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? And that I'm not really right with God unless I cross all my T's and dot all my I's. When you understand that what you do is based off of your relationship with God and nothing less, Amen. then you understand that it's not about you. Amen. Come on here. Did you understand that it's not you being so anointed? Amen. It's the anointed one who's in you. Oh, hallelujah. You can prepare, but if he is not in you, you wasted your time. Amen. We want to infiltrate, amen, the mindsets, amen, of religion. We want to come against Hinduism. We want to come against, you know what I'm saying, Islam. We want to come against every religious mandate that has been placed in the earth that is not in alignment with the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to be able to penetrate the mindsets of those who have been influenced by that and bring in apostolic philosophy. Yes. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. The mindset. In order to change minds, you have to influence them. Yes. Right? That's good. Hallelujah. Number two. Hallelujah. Amen. The mountain of family. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This right here has to be rebuilt. This is the only institution that God created. And we have to restore the sanctity and the solemnity of marriage. Yes. 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 And family. Yes. Amen. What God intended, God gives us families to complete the will of God. Yes, Lord. Come on, amen. amen. People today, they don't even want to be married anymore. That's right. We preach against marriage in our society. Mm -hmm. Okay? We don't even have a familial mindset. Everybody does their own thing. Yeah. The kids grow up, they go off on their own, and you see them, you don't see them. Yes. There's no, there's no coming together. We are a part of the family of God. Amen. So being a part of the family of God, we should be giving that to our families. Amen. Come on, amen. We are showing the world what family looks like. Yes. 
We're showing them what the ecclesia is supposed to look like based off of us. Amen. Amen. But if we don't have that right, I'm not telling you everything's going to be perfect. But I'm saying you got to learn how to work that thing. Come on, amen. And show them that even in the midst of hardship, if you got difficulty, whatever it is, that you know how to endure it with a mindset that comes from God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Number three, education. The systems of this world, amen, were set in place, amen, and they are set on the pillars of Greco-Roman and pagan philosophies. And if we are going to be able to reach those in the educational systems, then we must promulgate a Christ-centered worldview. Every church should have a homeschool, some kind of arm to be able to reach the kids. Amen. Amen. I know that we all have jobs and different things of that nature, but what you have to understand is when we send our kids into these secular environments, this is why we have backsliding children. Come on. Amen. God never intended for the world to teach our kids. Amen. Can I say that again? God never intended for the world to teach our children. We pour Christ into them. We send them to school. And the world pours, pours worldliness in them. Right. And then we have to fight with Susie wanting to switch and walk around, you know what I'm saying, wearing half dressed, you know, dressed up like, you know what I'm saying, somebody who's going out on corner selling something. Amen. Amen. And we get this fight in our home yes. because we've allowed a secular environment to educate our children. Amen. Now the world can send their kids whatever, wherever they want to. But at least bring them in and let them get a foundation. Show them what godliness is. It's not the church's responsibility to teach your children the Bible. It's yours. As Amen. A parent. Can I say that again? Amen. If you have children and you've never taught them scripture, you've never taught them what God's mind is concerning them. If you've never sat them down, amen, and taught them the Ten Commandments. I'm not talking about a Sunday school lesson. I'm talking about lifestyle. Yes. If we don't educate our children, the world system is. Amen. And then we're going to have another generation of godly, godlessness, and we're not going to be able to see the plans of God in the earth like we need to see. Amen. That's why God gave us our families, so that we could do the will of God with our families. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. It's okay that if something is going on in the class and they're teaching something in the classroom and you don't agree with it and you know that it does not conform to Christian beliefs, you know, or biblical beliefs, go in that classroom and voice your opinion. That's real. Amen. Don't just let them learn whatever. You let them go in there and, and, and the sex education and they're teaching them that it's okay for men to lay with men. They're teaching the children this in kindergarten. Right. My God. Right. My God. You know why? Because they want to impact and influence. Right. 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 Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. That was a hallelujah right there. My God. Hallelujah. Number four, the government. We must lift up the name of Jesus and infiltrate the governmental seats of authority like Daniel and Joseph and Esther to release a kingdom mindset and influence and impact legislation. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that God has some Daniels and Josephs and Esthers in government. I believe that. Hallelujah. Their sole purpose is to stand there and wait for their moment. <laughs> Everything that God, amen, has brought you through is just for one moment. Jesus, amen, walked the earth, hallelujah, amen, for 30 years for a three and a half year ministry. One moment. One moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. One moment. The years that Joseph spent in the pit at Potiphar's house, in the pit and in the prison, hallelujah, being a slave was all for one moment. Just one. Amen. And I believe that God have those that are in governmental seats that are quiet right now, but they're waiting for that one moment. God, give me the opportunity. I'm going to say what you want me to say. Hallelujah. Number five, media. Amen. David said, I was setting no a wicked thing before my eyes. We must impact the media by using the same tools that the world has access to by pushing the kingdom of God through social media, internet, television, and cable TV. But our intent, amen, hallelujah, is the preaching of the gospel, not entertainment. Yes. Can I say that again? Our intention is 
is to preach the gospel, not entertainment. We are flooded with entertainment. Yes. We are overstimulated with all of the entertaining aspects that are coming at us. The things that are drawing us away. Don't you know that the first place that the enemy comes to is your eyes? Yes. He impacts your heart with your eyes. Yes. That's why David said I was setting a wicked thing before my eyes. Because I know if my eyes have it, my heart will have it. Yes. Hallelujah. Before he went after Bathsheba, he saw Bathsheba. Yes. Come on here. Hallelujah. It's what you see that draws you in. Yes. So this is why you have to say, I'm sorry, I'm saved. I can't do that. Come on right here. I can't watch that. I can't, amen, I can't indulge in that. You got to be careful of what you set before yes. you because what you set before you will steal your power to influence. <laughs> this is the same thing that's being spoken of in Deuteronomy 13. Cut it off if it's offending your spirit. Yes. Don't just sit there and watch it. Yes. Yes. How do you enjoy watching how to get away with murder? Why are we trying to get away with murder? Amen. <laughs> Why are we trying to do that? Why are we trying to look at modern family and be a modern family and look at two men married together and, you know what I'm saying? What the devil is like? I don't want to be modern nothing. I want to be what God wants me to be. Amen. 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 All right? This is how we're going to maximize our impact is if we preach the gospel with what we have been given. Amen? Number six, I'm almost done. Arts and entertainment. The scripture says, he that's win of souls is wise. Since entertainment is not our goal, that's not our intention, that's not our purpose. Amen? amen? The best way that we can impact this mountain, amen, is to reach those and impact those that are lost in darkness. Amen. We should be going out there soul winning those that's stripping on TV. Yes, Lord. Come on here. Amen. amen. And don't be afraid to reach out to them. Amen. We used to preach the gospel without worrying about whether people liked us or not. Amen. Amen. It's time to get that back. Because they're trying to silence us. They're trying to drown out our impact and our influence. So you're going to have to rise up again. Amen. Somebody say rise up. Rise up. Amen. So we have to be ready to further God's purpose. Never losing our power to influence or impact those that we come in contact with. And number seven. Amen. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. We should be using our business acumen to further the gospel and the causes of the gospel. Translating kingdom economy. Somebody say translating kingdom economy. Translating kingdom economy. Amen. Hallelujah. To those who are bound. Amen. Hallelujah. To this secular economic stronghold that we live in. We should be resisting corruption. Amen. Idolatry, greed, and covetousness. By us walking upright and being integrous in our business practices, we are being a light to those in darkness. Amen. By us paying our bills on time, mm. not getting our cars we possess. Amen. By us not answering the phone saying, praise the Lord. And the bill collector's like, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Can you pay this bill? Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on here. Amen. Amen. This is, these are practical things that we need to do. We need to stop trying to do so much high and mighty. Let's, let's bring this down to home. Come on here. Amen. So that we can be, amen, those that impact, amen, with intent. Praise God. All right. So we want to resist corruption, idolatry, greed, and covetousness. Training up those who will and who can use their resources in the marketplace by providing leadership with integrity and honor. Come on. And honesty. Being faithful employees. Yes, God. Can I say that again? Faithful employees. How many of y'all work for somebody else? Faithful employees. Amen. The Bible tells a servant, obey your masters. Yes, amen. That's work related. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. That means you're supposed to submit to those. Amen. The scripture tells us about submitting to those that are forward as well as those that are good to us. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't want to hear that. That ain't deep. Uh, that, that man is just letting the devil use him. That might be. Yes. But you under his authority. Yes, amen. Amen. And you have to show them Christ yes. by the life that you live. Can you hold your tongue? Yes, Can you be quiet and take correction? Come on. Hallelujah. Can you come to work on time? Can you not call out sick so you can go shopping? Woo! Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Can you can you walk in integrity? Do people on your job know you say? Oh my God! Are you laughing at dirty jokes by the water cooler? Mm. Business. Yes. The scripture says in business, be man, which speaks of maturity. Amen. That means that you're putting away those childish yes. things. Yes. Childish behavior, which is temper tantrums and quitting because you don't like the environment. Oh. Amen. Amen. These are things, amen, that are going to cause us to have a proper witness. And it's going to cause us to be able, amen, to have that impact, amen, that we are looking to have. But you must be faithful over this. You must take this seriously. You must understand the severity of your call and the anointing of God on your life. And you cannot take it lightly. You cannot think that it's a joke. You cannot think, well, I've got time to waste. I can just do that later. No, you need to do this now. It is urgent that you take heed to the things that you have received. Amen. 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 Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. <laughs>